Woohoo! Here we are with Wine Green. We are back. Excellent. I love, yes. I love dancing to that music as it's going on. I'm sitting right. You just want to set up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who have we got with us now? We've got one viewer. Who's here? Yeah. Say hello. They were Give here immediately. Comment. Indeed. Uh, right now, it's just me and Jonathan. Everybody else ah. thinks it's too late at night. 12.30 at night is too late. I don't know how that happens. And our viewer disappeared. Yeah. Oh, well. Maybe they'll anyway, come. Anyway, um, yeah, wine green is wine green. It's, uh, who likes grammar that much, really? Not many. Nobody. Oh, there are at least we two. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well. Here we are uh, back with Wine Green. I think we should just get started. It's 1.30, 1.31 yeah. a.m. Let's move quickly. In Israel. <laughs> um, I think we will. All right. Um, we had Luke and, um, and Zev with us in the previous session. It is now 12.30 in Europe, and that is late for them. It's 1.30 in Israel in the morning. Never late for me. Uh, so welcome guys. Let's just jump right in. In this second, this uh, set of exercises, we're looking at specifically uh, adjective forms for plurals. Muriel, hello. Welcome to a uh, wine green session. Um, so it's uh, like tov, tovim, tovat, tovot. Uh, this should be pretty uh, standard knowledge. Uh, if you've gone through the sections on in winding grammar and so we'll go ahead and get started one thing we will comment before we start i think is the issue of word order that we kind of harp on down in number six and in all of the uh the sentences following we have a verb with the subject following it we will probably read it the way it's written in wine green's book and then do our little correction where we're just going to to switch the subject and verb because that for us is the unmarked normal word order that should be whenever there's no uh, nothing in front of it. And uh, with that comment, I think we'll we'll keep the comments on that to a minimum, but uh, definitely make the the change ourselves when we're reading because it it feels more natural, right, Jonathan? Correct. Are you with me? I am with you. Can you hear me? All right. Yes, of course. Do number one. All right. You want me to do number one. All right. So we have sustov. So noun followed by adjective. So what we have, if you translate it literally, is a horse, a good. So a, whoops, a good horse. And Jason's going to correct my capital A, aren't you? Well, I don't have to. You can correct it. <laughs> Gotta put that control Z. Of course. Yep. Yeah. I would change the period though to a semicolon oh, because yeah. you've got more to do. You got more to do. I thought I just had one sentence. A That's good not a sentence. horsey. And then Susim Tovim. Good horsey. So Susim Tovim, everything has to agree in person, number, and gender in Hebrew. So we have masculine plural, masculine plural. So horses. Goods, so good horses. Then, susatova, feminine adjective, feminine noun. A good, I'll put mare, since it distinguishes female horse. Susatovot, good mares. Nice. Let's comment real quick. Person number gender, we could uh, abbreviate with P and G. Uh, whenever we parse verbs, which we'll get into later, parsing, uh, we will need to indicate the person number and gender. Um, person is first, second, and third. That's I, you as a second person, and then he, she, it, third person. Number is singular and plural. Singular is I, plural is we. You, singular, or you, plural. Uh, he or she or it, and they. And gender is masculine or feminine. Or uh, common. Common gender means that it's used for both men and women. Oh, may we see the text, Jason? You're not. Oh my your goodness! Screen. I'm not sharing. I feel just dumb. Look <laughs> at that. Hi, Karen. How are you? 
It's uh, being shared. It's Keon. Care. I don't not sure how to pronounce it. Karen, but, probably. Okay. Uh, person number gender, PNG. I'm so sorry for not sharing the screen. I feel like a hill. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, for know. once, you feel like an idiot. Now you know how I feel when I study with you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so in uh, in Hebrew, this also will apply to, uh, to participles. The person number and gender is participles for, like, going and whatever. Um, Number or person doesn't apply, but number and gender does, and in Greek, also case endings, right? Case. Uh, but so this is agreement. If the sub, if the noun sus is is uh, singular and masculine, then the adjective needs to be singular and masculine. Person isn't really necessary because we we deal with that with verbs. But uh, number and gender in adjectives need to agree. So susim is plural, masculine, and so tovim needs to be plural and masculine. Uh, we're going to see that not all masculine nouns end in im in the plural, some end in ot. Not all feminine nouns end in ot in the plural, some end in im. Uh, but the adjectives will always match the grammatical ending. So let's just real quick, sorry. Av is father. The plural is avot with ot, and when we say good fathers, we say avot tovim, avot tovim, good fathers. We'll see uh, a lot of that as we as we move ahead. All right, so number two, navi kadosh, navi kadosh is a holy prophet. This is just something you need to know from the vocabulary. Navi kadosh, a holy prophet, uh, plural, neviim kadoshim, Holy prophets. Okay, this is uh, plural and it's indefinite. That's what an adjective needs to agree in definiteness. Um, definiteness that's uh, definite or indefinite. Um, gender and number. These are what adjectives need to agree in. Definiteness, gender, and number. So these are indefinite uh, and plural. The uh, and masculine, All right, feminine singular indefinite, uh, a holy prophetess, it's feminine, and niviot kdoshot, holy prophetesses. What a nice word that is. All right, any questions? We're good with that. <coughs> okay. So next we have Ishacham, a wise man. Anashim hachamim. Remember, anashim is the irregular plural of ish. So, and I guess it could also mean uh, a mixed group if it's males and females. It would go to anashim. Uh, so, good men or good people, or wise men or wise people. So, wise men. Isha uh, Hachama, a wise woman, and Nashim, Nashim Hachamot. So here Jason was talking about you have endings that seemingly don't agree, but if you notice that Nashim is the plural of the irregular plural of Isha, it is a feminine noun, in fact, that takes a masculine ending for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not sure. There might be a reason. Uh, I'm not sure either. So, Nashim Hachamot, wise women. No, they're just words that um, have these opposite endings, you know. I don't know. Aetz Gadol is a big tree. Um, the word Aetz could be wood. Uh, like you build something from wood, and it's, it doesn't have to mean a tree necessarily. It could be what you get when you cut down a tree and chop it up. <laughs> Big wood. <laughs> yes. The, without inappropriateness. Yeah. Uh, I'd seen dolim are uh, big pieces of wood. Um, it's wood can be broken up into pieces, and we call it aitzim. 
Uh, in English, you would say pieces of wood, but it, it literally means woods. But it doesn't mean woods like a forest. It just means pieces of wood. So in the next one, we have two words with the definition. It could also be big trees. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oops. It could also be big trees. Yes. It could be big trees or big pieces of wood, whichever. So now <laughs> we get <coughs> into uh, a little bit different version of looking at syntax with our esteemed teachers. Um, well, 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 number five. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hagadol. Hagadol. So the temple, the good, or they take the hay on Hagadol as a relative hay, the temple, which is good. Either way, the, I'm sorry, not good, great, great, the big temple. And then ha, ha Hechalim, Hagadolim, good, or why do I do that? I think of Gadol as a virtue. <laughs> uh, Big temple, big temples. Or palaces, right? Or palaces. The big or, palace, big palaces. If you had it by yourself uh, in Acadian, big house. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. it's just uh, palace. Palaces. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next one is where we diverge with uh, Windring. Right? Natan Adonai Le Yisrael Eretz. Tola v'tova. What if I did um, Oh, I don't, can't, don't I can't, edit. I can't, I can't move it. So, yeah. uh, dola, I know it sounds, for people who are just learning to pronounce Hebrew, hi, Zev, oh my goodness. Uh, Zev, if you want, I can send you the link and you can, you can jump up on here with us. He's already taught this um, before. This is old hat for him. Yeah. Here, I'll just send the link real quick if, if you want. You don't have to, but I'll send it to you so you have the option. There you go. Uh, anyway, um, so the word gadol, gadol, uh, if I'm coming back over to it, gadol uh, has that ah, the strong, long ah in the first syllable, gadol, gadol, big. But once you make it feminine and uh, you put the stressed syllable over there, that first syllable drops, and we say it in, uh, in the modern Hebrew pronunciation, not gedola, but gdo, do, gd, dola, dola. Natan Adonai the Yisrael Eretz gdola v'tova. And Weingren um, actually does teach that as two syllables, and not three. Gdola. Yeah. Hi, Zev. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Uh, so he's like, I can't sleep. I'm gonna do more Hebrew. So the Lord, we're gonna say Yud Hey Vav Hey, uh, gave to Israel. He gave Israel. Like we don't have to say two for the indirect object, but that's literally what it says. A large and good land. And we're gonna say the Lord gave Israel a large and good land. Uh, remembering that this is the name of God that is normally translated as the Lord in capital letters, all caps, like small caps, but I don't have that option here, so I'm not going to do it. Um, Wine Green just render, renders it as the Lord with a capital L. So, um, but it's God's name, so let's be reverent of it. That's why we write it without vowels. Okay. Uh, number seven, uh, Zeb, yeah. we just started. If you can just jump in there and grab it. If okay. he wants to, he doesn't have to. I want to. Okay, that cool. Is, that is makes perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Just before you start, we had this question, how often is this done? The question is, uh, what you're talking about, Karen. Uh, can you tell us which, yeah, how what often is, what is done? Yes. Uh, and we'll come back to you as soon as uh, Zeb has finished his translation. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Ah, sorry. Um, you don't have uh, access to the document. I don't think I have your Gmail. Ah, okay. Your Gmail. Uh, so I'll type it up as you say it. Okay. Okay. For now, yeah, fine. Yashav Hamelech Beafar Kol Hayom Velo Achal. So the king sat in the dust all day, and he did not eat. 
And uh, wine green would translate below uh, a and eight not. <laughs> yeah, he operates off of the King James version. Um, yeah, I try to translate. But, but that's great. I try to translate in such a way so old year old without any experience with reading any kind of text would understand. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's we great. would change. We would alternate the word order. Hamelech yashav be'afal kol ayom velo achal. Um, before we address things in that, he says yeah. the live streams. We do, on Monday, we do three live streams. That is Joshua at uh, 5 p.m. New York time. Then after that, this Wine Green session. And then after that, um, Wine Green English to Hebrew, that is uh, Patreon only. So there we go. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about word order after every single sentence. Because every no single problem. sentence that has a verb is going to, uh, in fact, number fourteen in Cook schema would be wrong. Well, would hold be on, just let's right. let's get this answered really fast, yeah. really fast. Um, the yeah. seats in the live stream are for people who have experience teaching Hebrew. We don't want to just let people like practice on it because it's for instruction. Uh, so we've. Like Jonathan, Zev, and uh, and Luke, they've got experience with Hebrew for a long time, so that's why I brought them on. Because um, it's our, our job is to answer the questions that are presented in the li in the live chat. Um, documents, mm, you should. If you need a copy of Wine Green, talk to me afterwards, and we'll see what we can work out. Uh, okay. So uh, one thing before we move on to Jonathan's sentence, uh, this be afar. To remind us of the uh, the rules of the of the definite article, uh, why is it be afar and not ba afar? Is that something you stress when you when you deal with wine green? Sure. I mean, Zev. Well, maybe ah. not. Oh, uh, mm, not really. Not, oh. I wouldn't. Uh, because in in usually we train, I teach in Slovak and there is no definite article in the Slavic languages, you know, so common mm -hmm. used. So I don't put such mm -hmm. so attention on that. So not I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, if my student wouldn't ask re, why there is no schwa and why there is suddenly segol or not patah or kamats, I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, deal with it. <laughs> okay, but Wine Green does deal with it. Uh, yes, he, and, he, does. Uh, he does. Yeah. But, so but, 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 Afar is dust, right? And be afar with uh, shva be afar is in dust, but this right. is be afar, which is in the dust. This is That's the cool. article. Um, so it's e eh because it's before a guttural with a mats that's unstressed. That's uh, that's the explanation. It's in a gut before a guttural with kamats that's unstressed. Uh -huh. cool. So now we have yashva hanavia tachat haetz. So Yashva and Nivya are agreeing with each other. Since Nivya is feminine, the verb has to be feminine. So, so the prophetess sat or dwelled, dwelled would probably be better, dwelt under the tree. Achat mm Mm-hmm. Um, all right, just sending a message. Fantastic. So obviously, we would say Hanvia, Hanvia Yeshiva Tachatayit. Yeah, she said. We don't have to repeat that tree. after every. We don't have to repeat word right. or after every sentence, right? It just sounds better. Hanvia Yeshiva Yeah, yeah. Number nine, Raim, Raim. This is Resh. Raim Hayu Anashim. Asher yashvu ba'ir hagdola. Ra'im hayu ha'anashim. This is a predicate adjective fronted because this is the standard order in Hebrew. To say the men are evil, you say ra'im ha'anashim. Evil are the men. So in this case, it's past tense. Hayu. Hayu, they were. Evil were the men. It means the men were evil, right? Now, which men? is defined in the asher clause. Asher clause is giving more definition to the men. So which men? The men who dwelt or sat 
in this case 12, in the great or big city. The men who dwelt in the great city were evil. Ra'im hayu ha'anashim asher yashvu ba'ir ha'gedola. Right? Questions? That's a that's a comp. It's a complicated structure because it's got the yeah. fronted predicate na uh, adjective and it's got the asher clause, which is something new in the grammar so far. Okay. Were you going to say something, Zed? Uh, I would just say that if it, it the great connotes the greatness, the the moral greatness. So if it was a if it was a moral great city, there wouldn't be the evil man. So I would just translate as a it, the big city means there is a lot of people <laughs> living in it. Yeah, if you have to yeah. say the great city, well, I mean, I, in, my, you know, in Jonah, not... yeah, in Jonah, it talks about uh, it talks about that great city as in, oh yeah, but that wasn't the great city, that was right. an invent. right? So it yeah. was a big city. Yep, yep. Because then, like we have, then, then we have the book of Nahum, right? Right, but in Jonah, it talks about that great city. The city was clearly evil, so it's talking about size. So but it, maybe it, it's mistranslated. Maybe it shouldn't be that great city. Maybe it should be the big city. Oh, yeah, that could be. All right. <clears throat> uh, but the next one is not for you, Jonathan. You did okay, the prophetess good. sat under the tree. So, yes. Is, is it my turn? Yes. Okay. Lola kach Shemuel Hanavi pri min hagan. So here we have the Lola kach. We see. Should I do it like what I would expect from a student, or I whatever I want? I don't know what is the way to do it. You know. We don't have rules. Okay, so for Laka, since we, we see the Kamat Patak, so we know this is 100% the verb. Then we see the Shmuel, and there we have the Navi, which is his profession, so that's a subject. So Shmuel Hanavi, the prophet Shmuel, did not, did not take. Then we have following the object, which is the fruit, the pre, and then we have from the um, garden. So. Mm -hmm. That I would. Right, but we wouldn't say the fruit because it's uh, just fruit. Did not take fruit. Uh, did not take. Did not take fru a fruit. Right. Any a fruit. fruit. Mm. Right. Maybe a, a piece of fruit. Maybe. Yeah. Did, Something yeah. like that. You know, English not my first line. You know, right when I. Right, <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's it. fine. Mm -hmm. so. uh, fantastic. Um, of course, we don't at this point. I don't think we have it. So we wouldn't be able at this point to make it uh, definite, the definite direct object. But we will be able to do that in a couple of lessons, or probably the next lesson, next exercise. Mm -hmm. So now we have lakacha, lakacha aha isha min hapri asher bagan v'gam natna la adam. So. So we have, first of all, verb comes first in this schema. So she took the woman. So the woman took minhapri from the fruit, asher bagan, which was implied verb in the garden. We have the preposition plus the kamats or plus the patach. So that's a preposition plus a definite article the so in the garden vagam natna la adam and also gave also she gave so and she also gave to the man or to, Ad, or to adam we could do probably to the oh, man God. but yeah nice. yeah Yep. When it says uh, she took from the fruit, min hapri, min hapri. No, yeah, what? it would have to be. It would have to be to the man. It couldn't be to Adam because there's a la Adam. There's an article mm -hmm. on it instead of le Adam. Mm -hmm. um, when it says from the fruit, she took from the fruit. What it means is she took some of the fruit. I, she did not take from all the all the apples from the apple tree. Yeah. Right. So to take from the fruit 
means this is called partitive. Yes, partitive. Partitive men. And it means that uh, you take some of it. Some of the oh. people uh, came outside. Um, she took from the fruit. It means that there was an apple on the tree, and she took like ten percent from the one from around the apple, which is a nonsense. Well, it would mean like there are, I don't know, thirty pieces of fruit on the tree, right. and she took some of it. Right. She didn't take uh, two other. apples, right? One for her and one for her husband, <laughs> <laughs> or That's whatever enough. the fruit was. Uh, I would just correct the pronunciation. Instead of la kecha, ke, I know this is represented as a vocal vocal shva, and it would be as far as um, like transcription and such, but we still say la kha. La kha the natna. Natna. Instead of na te na. Like try to, as far as the Israeli pronunciation, how the words flow. Lakha, lakhu, natna, natnu. Yeah, well, I'm not an Israeli. But I know, but we, but we have a, a way that we pronounce Hebrew. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, so mine would be lakhu ha'adam ve'aisha. Lakhu ha'adam ve'aisha. Min ha'etz ve'gam achlu min ha'pri. Okay, so... Uh, I would change the word word, of course. Ha'adam ve'aisha lakhu min ha'etz. The man and the woman took from the tree, that is what the tree had, they took part of it, and also ate from the fruit. Uh, maintain that partitive min idea from, from some of. Okay. Any questions? How are you guys following along? We're not getting much feedback. Uh, if you got anything to say or if you have a question or disagreement, we are excited to uh, address your, your comments and questions. Moving right along. Ze'ev. Okay. Ba'u al ha'ir ha'ra'a kol ha'devarim asher amru Hanevi'im hakedoshim. So here we have the verb ba, ba'u, and since the stress it's not on the last syllable but on the one before, we are always looking on the stress from the from the from from the end, not from the beginning. So the the root is beit vav aleph, if and not beit beit aleph hey, just. Uh, so then we have the al ha'ir, so that's not a subject because it has a preposition of on or upon. So we would look for the next noun. So kol hadvarim is the subject. So all the things which all the things came upon this, upon this, uh, upon the evil city, which the holy prophets set. That's how I would uh, translate this sentence. Let's because throw the relative clause after the word things. Okay. All, All the things which the Holy, which prophet, the Holy prophet said happened upon the evil city. Come, come upon, right. Mm -hmm. That's a very All the things weird. which the Holy prophet, That's a very prophet weird said sentence. came upon the city. Yeah. This is what it is. Ba'u ala ira'a kol advarim asher amu anvim doshim. I don't know. Sounds fine in Hebrew. I don't know if the English sounds bad. I don't know. No, the English is fine. But I feel like um, what you would have here is this clause being fronted from ordinary word order. Yeah. So, yeah. Normally, vayavo'u. Vayavo'u ala ir ala'a kol advarim. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which we haven't yet in our in our um, norm in our lessons. Is this another case of fronting in verse 13? Um, mm -hmm. That's what I just said. Yes. I, say. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because we haven't hit the verb consecutive yet. And he would, like Weingreen is thinking in his mind that the verbs come in first position. 
because in his mind, Vayavo'u would be the first word in the verse. Right. And that's true. Um, so he just doesn't do any re rearrangement of word order. He just puts the word into the past tense. So, so, so I, I think it's, I, it's a wine ring thing. So you're, so you're saying even though the wine ring claims the word order is the verb subject order, maybe he claims, he claims that based on the occurrence, occurrence of the Vav, Vav consecutive, which is very often, as we know. So he says, says, okay, so that's the most often occurrence. So let's go with that. Yes. And that's that's really the biggest argument that people have who think that uh, verbs come first in Hebrew. Absolutely. They, they think that since the verb consecutive happens all the time, then that means that verbs come first in Hebrew. That's it, that's just what they think. What are the gen what are, whatever the general rule is, or what was the... You know, ancient rule. But it's, <laughs> the last consecutive rule is very. It's, it's it's almost at least once in the verse, right? So it's it's the most um, often occurring occurrence. I would. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Bob consecutive is the most general occurrence, and for that reason, uh, almost all verbs come first. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, my turn, right? Uh, yes. Uh, this is strange. Lo natna haaretz the oh okay, the land did not give fruit. We don't have an object marker yet. Yeah, there is something missing. Yeah, there is. There's no object marker. No, I know the sentence. There is something something missing, Jason. Huh? In my sense, what's missing? Uh, in this, in Lonat the Naaret, pre, ki ayu la, ki ayu something la dunai, ki anashim, something ayu la dunai. Anashim ra'im, I think. Mm. Sure. Which, which exercise um, is this? It's number four. four. Let me look. I've got my book. So, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's sorry. I type, ki ayu ha anashim Kihayuha Anashim Raim. Ah, there we go. Anashim Raim Ladunai, yeah? I don't have a Ladunai in my in my book. So the, the thing is I type this by sight. And so yeah. I I am liable to make mistakes. I'm yes. glad that you're checking it. Well that makes sense. Ki Hayu Anashim Raim. Okay. Yeah, so you have because, and then you have verb subject first, even though we don't agree with that word order. Um, actually, no, we do agree with that word order because there's this key here, mm -hmm. which would flip it. Ki hayu hanashim. So most of the time when we talk about word order, our explanation isn't going to conflict with the written text. It's just going to explain it differently, why it is the way it is. So, because Hayu Hanashim Ra'im, the men or people were evil, and you don't Period. have, yeah, you don't have the Ladonai anymore. Okay. Nope. Cool. Okay. Um, Amar Moshe El Kol Yisrael Kadosh Hayom Ladonai. I probably, my eye po probably pulled it from the next one. That's why I put uh, yeah. Ladonai on this one. Uh, Moshe Amar, Moshe Amar el kol Yisrael kadosh hayom la Adonai. Uh, Moses said to all uh, Israel, all of Israel, uh, today. That's the subject, and the, the the predicate noun is kadosh. Predicate noun or predicate adjective, excuse me, is is brought forward. Today is holy to God. Today is holy to God. If I may correct you, that's how I was taught. I think also Wangren explained it somewhere. It's mm -hmm. Ladonai. It's it's not La Adonai, but it's Ladonai. There was yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, for some reason in Israel, people tend to say La Adonai, La Adonai, but it's Ladonai. Absolutely. They also do it with Lelohim in Israel. When you speak, people say Le Elohim. Right. Le Elohim. But, uh, you're supposed to say Lelohim. 
Yeah. Like shma, shamartem instead of shmartem. Right. They say it, and, and I picked up bad habits in my speech. Okay. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I have bad habits, and I, I notice them. And it's it irritates me. influenced by his uh, surroundings. That's what uh, my money does. Yeah. True. But the oh. people dictate pronunciation. So no. No. it's not wrong. It shouldn't. <laughs> the Torah that takes no, no, no. I don't let Israeli speak around my children so they won't destroy their proper Hebrew. <laughs> That's good. That's brilliant. All right, Zev. Yalla. So, do, okay. so in your Hebrew, you don't have Arabic expressions like uh, Yalla and no. Sababa. No, not really. Yeah. Uh, okay, 16. Bagan, Hayu, Etzim, Dolim, Vetovim. So here we have the verb hayu. Of course, the root is the hey yud hey, and the letter hey at the end doesn't like. He 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 he's not friends with any other letters, so he so he dis it disappeared. Yes, hey yud hey yud yud, like the academia says. So the in in the garden, mm -hmm. yes yes, in the garden they were big big and good trees. Oh, tasty! Oh, tasty, tasty treats. The fruits with which has the taste, the, the, the fruits with which were tasty. <laughs> yeah, I also have trouble with the word good uh, yeah. in Hebrew because of what happened in Greek. In Greek, you got that word kalos. I don't know what uh, it means. Kalos. Good treats. It has a good. To, is good. it good or is it lovely or is Leave it the nice, Greek you know? out of here? The Greek is nice, no nice to look at, or it, it pro, provide lot. Of, pro, it provides lot of uh, shadow, or it has the good fruits. Yeah, good exactly. Lovely. It means so many different things. Um, and the word hayu, because it doesn't have a subject, it seems as the predicate noun, because it doesn't have a subject, we insert there in English, there were. Right in the garden, there were big and good trees, big and fine it trees. Reminds, it reminds me the verse in the Shir Hashirim, if I may, mm. which which the Metsudos, Sion, and David explains it, that the... Uh, that there are good, there are good trees and bad trees. That there are the trees with a lot of shadow and lot and and not so much fruits, and there are the trees with a lot of fruits but not with so many shadows. So, it's like it's mm. like um, uh, immediate pleasure and pleasure after and and the real pleasure, you know, after to toiling in something. Yeah, and the good idea is that they um, they fulfill their purpose. I think a good eye is an eye that sees. You know. All right. Well, Jason, we can answer questions again if they didn't catch it. No, right. he he asked it and we answered it. That oh, was a long oh, time ago. oh, 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 oh. I yeah. just noticed it. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. Well, then I anticipated that question because I didn't know that question was asked. Um, <laughs> which is, I'm always proud of myself when that happens. <laughs> um, so, lo achlu hanavi'im. So, not is a negating particle. Not is one of those particles that would invert the word order. So instead of hanavi'im achlu, we have lo achlu hanavi'im. So the pro whoops. Uh, okay, so the prof. Whoa, what's going on here? The prophets. Yeah, did not eat bahechal in the temple, ki because. Kdoshim Hayu Lalunai, because they, well, they were holy, or something, or somebody was holy to Adonai. That is the prophets. The prophets, yeah. uh, they didn't eat in the temple, or it were not, let's not, not say temple, we'll say palace, because uh, it's probably the palace of the king, and they didn't want to eat there and be defiled because they were holy. Wouldn't that be? Uh, and that sounds like temple language to me. But I don't think that they would be defiled by eating in the temple because the temple is not going to have any defiling elements in it. Well, we don't have to exegete Weingren sentences. Yeah, it's true. So <laughs> uh, good. Uh, in modern Hebrew, this is one that we do have distinct from biblical Hebrew. Lo achlu an ve'im. We would say han ve'im lo achlu. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't invert the word order in modern Hebrew. Just so you know. All right, 18. Ra'a ha'am ki tov ha'pri asher lakhu ha'anashim min ha'itzim. Sorry, reading too fast. Sorry. 
ראה העם כי טוב הפרי אשר לקחו האנשים מן העצים אשר בארץ אשר נתן אדוני לישראל. So, Ha'am Ra'a, the people saw. What did they see? The content of their vision, the content of the things that, of the things that they saw. The people saw that the fruit was good. It's just that good, the fruit. But because we're saying saw in the past, yeah. we would also interpret that in the past. Now, which fruit is it? Let's use that Asher phrase here. Um, that the fruit which the men or the people took or had taken, there's no distinction in Hebrew, had taken from the trees was good. The fruit was good. The people saw that the fruit which the men had taken from the trees was good. And then we have another Asher clause. And which trees are they? The trees that were in the land that the Lord had given to Israel. That's a big, long uh, three Asher clauses. Oops. The people saw that the fruit which the men took from the trees that were in the land that uh, Adonai had given to Israel was good. Mm -hmm. So it's, we've got three relative clauses now. in there. It's just now occurring to me how fast wine green is moving because these are not easy, easy sentences and we're only on exercise four. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he picks it up. So here doesn't, doesn't move as fast as the Greek intensive course by Hanson and Quinn. Well, yeah, don't care about that. <laughs> um, Zev, I think it's your turn. Yes. I don't care either about Greek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys, come on, you kill me. No, no, sorry. The Septuagint is so good. Sorry, sorry. I don't know anything about Greek, so how could I care? <laughs> <laughs> it's all Greek to you. Yeah, it's all Greek to me. All, Greek is all Greek to me. Uh, that's correct. <laughs> just... All right, we're on number 19, okay. if you don't mind. Okay, 19. Chachamim v'tovim hayu hadvarim asher amar hanavi he chacham el ha-anashim asher hayu v'heichal. So, uh, clever and uh, good were the words which uh, we skip the verb. It's fine, we want us to get used to, to the verb, the subject after the verb. The clever prophet said to the people which were in the temple. Yeah. Or the palace. Uh, oh, because yeah. it's people, it's better in English to say who. Oh, okay. for people. Thank you. Uh, good. Clever and good. Maybe wise and good. Wise, wise, and, and, good. wise and lovely. We could also the word. Word. We can, you know, the words. I don't know. Mm. Good. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, understandable. Let's move on. And we tend to use the rim also in, in, in uh, Hebrew to mean things. Like... Uh, Right. The things that he said were wise and good. But uh, the words that he said, the things that he said, it's really the same thing in Hebrew. Davar. Why are you underlining that? And it's very ugly now. <laughs> hmm? yeah. Grammatical but, word triggering inversion again. I yeah, meant but, to highlight it. Yes, yeah, because when, okay. you, when you underline it, you cannot read an echo dot. Yeah. You can't read the vowels. Right. Uh, okay. All right, but that's the right word order. There's nothing wrong with it. So right. So so since there's a share in front of it, it inverts. So mm -hmm. this is why verb subject is so common because there's so many things you can do to it to make it flip. Yep. So we got two more, and then we'll move to uh, English oh, yeah. to Hebrew for the patron viewers. Oh. Colton, so, make the comment by the way that uh, that. Tov is like a word that just is generally positive. Mm -hmm. Generally positive in uh, different ways that can be translated. So I'm going to try to make Jason happy <laughs> and say karu. <laughs> Why does that make me happy? That's right. 
because I'm not saying karau like I ordinarily would. But it actually, just sounds good. Kara'u. Probably say probably say karu actually, right? Silent olive. No. So, oh, okay. The so, olive has to be. The difference between look, this is interesting. Sorry, um, in um, the difference is ka, uh, karu and karu. Karu is uh, they happened, they took place, and karu is they read. Right. Um, it's funny because like we we would say uh, likro is to is to read likro, and likrot with the hey that becomes ot is to happen likrot. But in the Mishnah, it's very very common to say karot uh, the the likrot instead of likro for to read. In fact, even in modern Hebrew, where we are very generally strict about uh, about this. There is one situation in which this does drop and become something else. When we say it's a town that's called by a certain name, it would be Kruya. Kruya and Karui. Karui. Right. And the same thing, um, for some reason, Shgi'a, a mistake, isn't from the Aleph root, and it's Shagui. Shagui, mistaken. Karui called. Uh, Kanui purchased and Shagui mistaken. Sorry, that's just that's just a fun thing. Normally, we're very strict about this distinction between Karu and Karu, but uh, but there are times when that distinction falls apart for some reason. Uh, Colton, the reason why the third link the the link isn't up for the third session yet is because we don't know ah. what it is yet. No, I do. I do have it. Oh, you um, do have. It. Sorry about that. Yep. I'll throw that together while um, while Jonathan does the next one. It's Jonathan, right? Yes. Yes. All right. So let me get my thing back here. Um, so karu karu hanavi'im b'chol gadol. So the prophets uh, they called out in uh, I'm going to say loud voice since it's talking about a voice. Oops. Samuel, he is, he is, so the the uh, noun, the pronoun can be functioning as a copula. So Samuel is uh, a prophet to Adonai or is a, um, is Adonai's prophet. Belonging to uh, right because it can be belonging. Belonging to mm -hmm. just um okay fine fine good good winding the size four from English to Hebrew English into Hebrew uh, okay um I'm sharing the link now it's on the Patreon very nice thanks for for letting me know I wasn't aware. All oh, right, number 21. That's my second uh, large mistake today. See, Jonathan, I admit when I make mistakes. Yeah, it still doesn't happen very much. This is a fluke day. This, Maybe it's three. This Remember day. we had the, the thing up here where I, where I put Lado 9. It's supposed to be Anashima Yuva Im. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, I think this so is a fluke. Third. This is not ordinarily happening. This is a rare occurring yeah. day. I'll tell you what it is. I've worked... Three night shifts in the last week, and I have been exhausted, exhausted, and I've been trying to keep everything together. I make mistakes. Even tonight, we're going to finish the next session around 3.30 in the morning, and then I'm walking an hour. I'm walking from here to give a time because there are no night buses now that it's winter time. Winter time reduces our transportation options, and I'm, I refuse to pay for a taxi. Huh. It's wartime and we're poor in Israel. Support your local Israeli. <laughs> <laughs> or your or your uh, Hebrew teaching Israeli. Well, at, at least uh, be aware of all the nonsense that's happening out there and the anti-Semitism. Um, and it's terrible. if you have the opportunity to speak up against this nonsense, against this uh, 
please do do your best tell your friends show them you know what's happened here and that uh, that israel really is on the side of the right right. anyway number 21 to adonai latovim ve laraim in this case we want to stress that word ve even though normally it's not uh, because it's latovim ve laraim so good is the lord the lord uh, is good uh, we could say in English both, but uh, we don't have that word both here, but it's to those who are good, to the good people, the good men, good people, and to the bad people uh, or evil people. We can make this a substantive and just say the Lord is good to the good and to the evil, to the good ones and to the evil ones, um, because God is good all the time. That's what all they the say. Time, right? God is good. <laughs> hey, there you go. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. That is the end of exercise four. Well, Jason, uh, hold up. That was very Methodist of you. <laughs> I don't know the difference Methodist and very, Baptist. And... Very, very high church. <laughs> very high church. Methodist, Episcopalian, Lutheran. Those. Is that part of like a liturgy somewhere? Yes, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Yes, it's. A I don't. I don't know about that. I just know that. Uh, I don't know. That that's something that you hear. You hold that out of your butt, but congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> I even know the word liturgy in liturgical. Liturgy. Okay, fantastic. Um, we are finished with these exercises. Is there anything that anybody wants to ask or? have answered before we cut this off and go to the next session uh, for Patreon only. Um, I, oh, you still don't see it on Patreon? Sorry, hold on. I'm very sorry. Let's see. Okay, it didn't release. Um, here, let's try this now. Now it says publish now. I'm re- I'm really new to Patreon. This is the first time I've ever put this thing together. And now it says share locked post. No. And it shows up on the feed now. Please verify that it's there. I'm sorry about that. I really am new to Patreon. I'm new to streaming. This is all fun stuff, but it gets confusing. Mm-hmm. And Colton, you've put like on about everything, and that uh, was like notification, notification. Colton's <laughs> our biggest fan. I, I like Okay, that. it's there. Uh, talk about the document. Um did you find me on Facebook? Because I'd rather share that on Facebook than on here, if you don't mind. Um, I assume that, uh, Karen, that you came to us through Facebook. Um, how do we do m.me? I think this is the... Not on Facebook. How did you find us, Karen? If it wasn't on Facebook, I'm very curious. Yeah. M.me is how you send somebody to Messenger, right? I think so. Just saw it in YouTube. Excellent. Wonderful. Yeah, that that would send a message to me directly on YouTube. Um, Here, just write me an email and we'll talk about it. All right. So um, trying to get engagement. Yeah, it does. Anything you do yeah. helps us. Please like this video and subscribe to us, Karen, if you haven't already. Um, guys, it's really nice to be with you. Uh, Zev, will you join us for the next session? When is it starting? We're doing the, uh, in right after five the, minutes. We're doing okay, the, so the, then yes. the uh, Hebrew by, English. By the way, Jason, I send you on Facebook my email to Messenger. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So I will uh, send you the link to the next session, and, and I, send you I will also. I send you also one it? table. I said I also send you one table which I made on my own for the for the roots which appear in the, I think, appear in the binding. Very interesting. You could also use it, you know, whatever you we'll, want. We'll see about that. Um, I'm just. I've got to guys. Everybody, thank you so much. I'm going to cut the stream, and we'll catch you next week. Um, Colton, we'll see you in a few minutes. Bye, um, folks. Thanks, guys. And anybody that Om wants to join us, anybody that wants to join us, can subscribe to our Patreon and get the <laughs> link.
It's true. It's true. Uh, all right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, folks. Yeah.